Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to review the TicWatch E2 and S2 from Mobboy. These watches are promising us to have a lot of the features out of the more expensive smartwatches on the market, but at a much more affordable price. This is TK and let's check them out. So what I have in front of me is the box for the E2, but the S2 pretty much gives us the same experience. Uh, they're both made by Mobvoi. These are brand new watches that were not only announced at CES 2019, but that are now available through Amazon. And I'll give you guys a link in the description below. Um, again, there's two different ones. There's the E2 and the S2, and there's pretty much only one big difference between the two uh, that kind of justifies the slight higher bump in price. But overall, the boxing experience will be pretty much the same. We have uh, swim proof up to five atmospheres, 48 hour battery life, that's the maximum, lightweight design, built in GPS and heart rate um, sensing at the bottom. And of course, in the box, we have the USB charger dock, uh, basically user manual information, and the TicWatch E2 or S2, depending on the one you decide to pick up. Now, as far as the actual dock, the mechanism we have here is magnetic the way we've seen it in the past now this is the s2 and this will work with both the s2 or the e2 actually for the most part both of them have the same thing uh, it connects via usb type a to any usb source so it doesn't actually have to be even a wall connector just connect it to your pc and charge it whenever you're not using your watch and the really cool thing about it is there is literally no way for you to put this thing wrong misalignment and once it's on it's pretty uh, connected it's basically good strong magnets and it, again it'll work with the s2 as well as and here we have the e2 same thing uh, both form factors are pretty much the same. The, the aesthetic difference is basically in where the button is placed as well as some of the uh, basically resiliency on the watch. So here we have, this is the E2 on the left, the S2 on the right. You'll notice the difference in the bands. Both are carrying silicon bands as well as the fact that both have removable bands at the bottom. Um, and again, the Poco pin connector as well as the heart rate monitor on the back. For the most part, uh, they're pretty much identical, not only in position, but also in function. Now looking over the specification, pretty much only one thing separates these two, and that's basically the millimeter grade 810G resistance that we have here on this S2. And that's pretty much what justifies the price point from the difference between one over the other. Uh, they're about $20 in difference. Uh, but as far as the actual dimensions and the actual processor, both are running the Qualcomm Snapdragon Wear 2100. Uh, both are running a 1.39 inch AMOLED display that's 400 by 400 pixels, as well as the fact that both have GPS, Bluetooth, GLONASS, uh, and then of course, depending on your market, they do. Uh, but as far as accelerometers, uh, gyroscopes, heart rate monitors, all of the stuff is pretty much the same. What you'd expect from a smartwatch that also works as a, well, really a fitness tracker. And I think a lot of the features that we're going to talk about today will really extenuate the fitness tracking functionalities that make us have uh, basically a much better value for the dollar, comparing this to even more expensive smartwatches on the market. The last thing I want to mention to you guys is both these watches have 450 milliamp hour battery that is ready to last up to two days. Um, although with my experience in using these watches, I think it's a solid day, maybe carry over a little bit to the next day, but depending on your usage and if you get a lot of notifications, uh, you're using a lot of for fitness and so on, uh, the battery life will be dependent on your usage. Just, just keep that in mind, but a good, definitely a solid day from there. Looking over the UI for the most part, there's a few tick watch specific watch faces that are included in the box. Uh, you notice right there, it goes directly into the ambient mode and I do have that turned off on this one. Uh, touching it once will open it up. You can swipe from the left and you'll get access to the Google Assistant. Swiping from the right gets you access directly into the TickWatch application. I'll get a chance to show that to you guys. From the top, we have our normal notifications as well. Well, sorry, we have our normal toggles as the notifications are at the bottom now and you can scroll through them, go all the way to the bottom and clear all. Uh, but from the top, we have the access to the shortcuts, the brightness, the battery saver, uh, basically locate my phone, airplane mode, uh, do not disturb, as well as uh, I think this is pretty much just theater mode. Going into the settings tab, we have display, app alert notification, gesture control, as you have tilt to raise, and it does have ambient mode, as I mentioned, as you can see, once it'll go to sleep, it just turns on basically like an always on display. Now that does consume more power. So to get the best power consumption or savings on this, you probably want to disable gestures as well as the always on display. So you actually have to tap the actual button to turn it on. Connectivity via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So we do have that in here, accessibility, personalization, storage, and of course system, we can go in there. Uh, you have battery saver, date and time, restart, power off, disconnect and reset to a new device, about and of course regulatory information. Swiping from the right gives us access to the tick motion application. Clicking on the actual little play person on the bottom here will get us into the different activity modes. So you have right there, we have outdoor running, uh, we have outdoor walk, we have indoor running on a treadmill, bicycling, cycling, freestyle, as well as swimming as this does support for both of them up to fight atmosphere of support. So basically swimming should have no issue on this. But other than that, you basically can set it up and go in there and select the actual activity you want and go into it. 
pressing the button one more time takes us into directly the different applications. Now we do have Google Fit, uh, all the applications there, but to get the full benefit of this watch, you do need to use the Tick Watch application. So this is the right there, Tick Health and Tick Pulse that gives you access and of course Tick Ranking, uh, Timer, Translator, and you can of course add more and more applications. Pressing and holding on the watch face will give you access to the different watch faces that you have already installed or you can jump over to the phone and see the different ones that you have in there. On your smartphone, there's two applications that we need to download. There is going to be the Android Wear application as well as the Mobvoi Tick Motion app. So we go in here, this is the health application, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, and of course, your standard Android Wear application, it connects to both, uh, and you're able to basically jump between uh, the one or the other. So the S2, the E2, and of course, in the past, I've reviewed for you guys the Pro, and we'll do a quick comparison with that in a second. Uh, but again, you can go in there, you have access to all of the watch faces that you normally can access. Uh, you have configuration here for the notifications as to what notifications get pushed to the watch, agenda settings, uh, Google Assistant setting, of course, and of course, advanced settings uh, to be able to get us into the turn on the always on display, tilt to wake, the auto launch media controls, which is really functional if you're listening to music on your phone, as it automatically launches that as the default face to your watch whenever you wake it up. Of course, different accounts as you're able to sync up your Google accounts now. Uh, watch battery to be able to see and basically see the performance of the battery itself. Now, jumping into the watch storage, we have two gigs of available storage that you're able to use. And out of those two gigs for me, I've used about a gig roughly, uh, mostly with music, different updates on the actual watch, fit, uh, tick exercise, contact storage, all of that stuff. So depending on how many apps you install, you're definitely gonna be consuming the storage. But you do have up to two gigs and you are able to download music using the Google Play Music app as long as you have the account that allows you to do so. And what's cool about it is when you do go running it with this, you don't have to bring your phone. You connect your Bluetooth headphones directly in here and you'll have volume control and music playback control directly from the watch. Going into the Mobvoi application, you'll see the connected watch that's currently working for you. Uh, you're able to go in here and of course add routines to it, shop if you'd like to be able to buy additional ones and of course you have your account information. But clicking on it gets you into directly into the watch. And uh, since this is the beginning of the day, I haven't had a chance to actually rack up anything here, but we'll get a chance to look at previous dates that I've used. I went back in time, uh, mostly to my last day that I was on a trip, just to show you guys some of the main benefits. And you can see basically that this is very reminiscent of the way we see our uh, basically activity rings or accomplishments, uh, and it goes in circles. And if you do go over the main baseline, it'll start uh, shading it darker. And you can see here um, on the actual uh, exercise time, I've had more and as well as over there. And this was definitely one of my heavier days. We were walking in Paris, we had up to six hours of usage and it's really cool. You get to see all the information that you want, all the data information gets synced directly, and of course you can scroll through it and see the different dates. And the cool thing about it is it does automatically track all of this information. You don't have to automatically turn it on. If you do want to start an activity directly from your watch, go in there, swipe to the right, and go into the actual ex exercise activity and then select the different activity you want to do and you can start it right away or you could just allow it to start on its own. It's really functional, it's very good. Battery life, as I mentioned to you guys on this, is pretty decent. I would say a solid day of performance if you're not going to be getting like literally about a thousand notifications as I'm part of a few groups over at XDA and we're always getting notifications, comments and so on. So that just keeps pushing more and more notifications to my watch and, and me interacting with the watch a lot more. Uh, but I think on average usage, about a day and a half would be a good expectation. When we compare the S2 and the E2 to some of the more expensive options, you start seeing some of the main value in them. And the reason behind that is this is a $300 to $350 watch. This is the Galaxy watch from Samsung. And this is actually from Mavoi. This is the Tick Watch Pro. The Tick Watch Pro has a couple of extra features. One of them obviously is the fact that we have two displays here to be able to control and save battery. And of course, we do have a longer battery life on that because of that secondary display. We also have two buttons to speakerphone as well as a microphone and the same here with the Galaxy Watch. But what we're getting here is these features are coming in at, let's say, $100 more here, at comparing it to the E2, and up to almost $150 to $200 if we go up to the Galaxy Watch. So keep in mind, screen size, they're all running pretty much the same thing. They're all gonna be supporting the, uh, and I'm talking about the E2 and the S2, uh, the five mattresses, atmosphere uh, protection, swim protection, of course, be able to use it in the pool. You'll be able to get your heart rate monitoring on it. Charging it every night, I think is reasonable as we charge our phones every day, uh, but you're getting them at, again, at 159 starting point and $179. So you're looking at a much, much better value for the benefit that you're getting. You're getting almost all the benefits with a very small amount entry point price point the last two weeks, I've been using the S2 as my daily driver smartwatch. Um, and I have to say that overall, the experience is very good. Battery life, I think, is about a solid day. I usually charge it the next morning when I'm at the office. I just plug it into my laptop and it works quite well. 
Um, I have not been able to get to the two day that as they're indicating because I think for the most part I just have too many things going on and I interact with the watch way too much. I like to actually respond to my messages directly from my watch as opposed to having to basically take out my phone and try to respond there, especially for the quick answers there. So for me, a solid day and I think I'm very happy with the way it works. Um, comparing it to the E2, I think for the most part, unless you really want that military A10G uh, protection, meaning you're going to be banging your watch a lot, I think the 159 is a really good starting point. And of course, you're getting good results. Uh, the heart rate monitoring is really good. You do need to download and install that second app and give it permissions for those functions to work. So if you definitely, if you pick up the watch and you're turning it on, you're noticing things are missing, you need to download the Mobvoi application. And that gives you all of the tick motion functionalities, the heart rate monitoring, the activity tracking, all of those things. And it'll get you running very, very well in the system there. Um, and overall, I think the 2100, although not the newest chipset that we can get on a smartwatch, for the price point and what feature set that you're getting, I think it's a good combination. You have to keep in mind the, the pros and the cons for this. Uh, the cons, obviously, is that we're not getting everything under the sun. But the fact of the matter is we're starting at 159 to 179 so I'll give you guys a link in the description below to give you guys more information as well as availability for the actual TicWatch E2 and S2 from Mobavoy. Um, and I'm hoping there'll be a lot more stuff coming up. And uh, you know, obviously I would have loved to see a refresh of the Pro model as that's the one I've been using, but hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to see more of that. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video.